Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to another Blood Splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. Crazy! Evil! And this is Count Jackula. <laughs> and we just sat through one hell of a fucking experience. Because we just watched Mandy, the latest film starring Nicolas Cage from the director of Beyond the Black Rainbow. An equally crazy film, though for different reasons. <laughs> yeah. You could definitely tell this was done by the director of Beyond the Black Rainbow. Oh, it's it's got that that feel that like kind of like it's weird because he he is clearly a grindhouse filmmaker who oh, is God, yeah. who is sought out to make art. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Like well, that's what I love about. That's why I love. About he is him. he is the perfect uh, combination of the art house and the grindhouse into one filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This feels like yeah. if the this is like if the director of Beyond the Black Rainbow, which if you've already seen that movie, you kind of got an idea of what we're talking about. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, which was that that movie was like a homage to like two thousand one and Solaris. Solaris, yeah. And movies like that. Uh, it, imagine if that director decided to sit down and make his version of Hobo with a Shotgun. And that's kind of where this movie yeah, starts. Yeah, yeah, But instead of specifically Grindhouse movies being the influence, it's fucking album covers. Yes, yes. Like, we're talking, like, old school Black Sabbath covers, Man o War covers, things like that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and... and Thematically, the movie's influenced by uh, the Satanic Panic. Yes. And things like that, which is probably why he's pulling from a lot of those old, like, heavy metal and punk rock album covers. Yeah, yeah. Iron Maiden is, yes. Iron Maiden is featured. Absolutely. So uh, was Quiet Riot? Or... I don't know. I yeah, don't, but, but I, 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 bands I probably, like that. I could probably go through, like, shot by shot and go, like, oh, that's a Blue Oyster Cult cover. Oh, that's a, that's a this cover. Yeah. Because, like, every shot feels like it's taking influence from some well, sort of cover. Well, Definitely when I was watching it, I had... Um, now, one of the things about the movie, uh, not a spoiler, mm -hmm. it, but it's a stylistic thing that you might be interested in, is that some of it is animated. Yes. There are brief Which dream sequences that are animated. feels like it's straight out of heavy metal. Exactly. That's where I was going with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does. It's one of those you're looking at and you're like, dude, if you had done this as a heavy metal sequence, it would have been perfect. If they ever make a new heavy metal movie, I want this guy to do one of the segments. Oh, fuck yeah. Just 100%. Fuck Yeah. Out. Absolutely. Holy crap. Um, and basically, we haven't even gotten into the plot of this movie. It's it's essentially um, The Crow, but set in the backwoods. Yeah. You have like this guy who's played by Nicolas Cage, who's in love with this woman, but then these weird cultists show up. They kill his wife, and then he seeks out and gets revenge on them. That's yeah. the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, keep, I kept finding myself <laughs> going like, how many times is Nicolas Cage going to redo... Ghost Rider, yeah. a la The Crow. Yeah. I'm like, because we're at four and counting. This, this is the fourth one. This also feels like, much like uh, Drive Angry, this feels like Ghost Rider movie without Ghost Rider. This oh my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's one of those, like, you just find yourself going like, I feel like this is these people going like, everyone who saw those Ghost Rider movies who had a good idea was like, Oh, you motherfuckers. Oh, I'll show you how this is done. This is how I will done. use Nicolas Cage, too, to prove how perfect that should have been. Fuck you! But yeah. even even just describing that simple premise to you, that simple revenge story premise, this movie goes ape shit with that premise. Oh, God, Because, yeah. like, like, A, you spend way longer on the actual, like, uh... Uh, his his wife getting killed part than you expect. You spend the 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 way it what it focuses on when he's getting revenge is not what you expect it to focus on. Yeah, and some of the scenes that happen are just pure like surrealist fantasy. Yeah, the whole <laughs> the whole thing feels like a King Crimson album. Yes, you know, yes. like and it starts with a quote from King Crimson too. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, not King. Yeah, King King Crimson. I forget who that quote was at the beginning, but I do know what you're talking. I, yeah, about. Yeah, 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 like. Like King Crimson is specifically mentioned in the movie, and it does feel like listening to Court of the Crimson King. It's so good. You know, it's oh, really man. good. I just, I was so fucking in love with this movie from start to finish. Now, I will tell you right now that this movie takes a lot of, like, acid trip interludes. Like, literally at oh, times. Yeah. In which yeah. it's just slow scenes with a lot of, like, freaky psychedelic imagery. Yeah. Um, so, like, if you just are going into this movie wanting to see Nicolas Cage get revenge, you get that. But you need to know that you're not just going to get that. You're also going to get this psychedelic shit yeah. that is insane. <laughs> well, one of the things that's so great about this movie is we could tell you everything that happens in the plot. That's 
not the same as watching the movie. This is one of those movies where it's not a plot movie. This is a the way you're telling the story. Yeah, yeah. This is you're watching the way the tale unfolds mm -hmm. because you have a pretty good idea where most of this shit is. going Oh yeah, from and the it goes go. pretty much where you think it's gonna go. Yeah, you know, like plot wise, this movie you're gonna figure it out within the first five minutes. Yeah, but like that's not why you watch this movie. No, you watch this movie <laughs> for everything that the actor and the actors and the directors and everyone is doing. Yep. You Absolutely. know, this is everyone working at peak. Yes. And it's fucking If amazing. you love Insane Cage, you get Insane oh, Cage. Oh, you get it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's really funny because this is two types of Nicolas Cage in one movie. Oh, yeah. You get, like, the heroic uh, uh, leading man Nicolas Cage from, like, Con Air yeah. at the beginning of this movie. But by the end of it, he's basically insane, rabid crypt Nicolas Cage like you get in, like, Port of Call, New Orleans. Yeah. You know? It's like... Yeah. Yeah, and they even do like some homages to that movie. Oh yeah, yeah there's like an iguana scene. <laughs> yeah, there's an iguana scene. This goddamn. Thing. <laughs> What's that lizard doing there? Yeah, yeah. It's I, I think it's a gecko. Actually, I think you're right. It's still, a gecko. It's not an like iguana, you're it's like. A gecko. What did we just do a lizard scene because he was in Port of Call, New Orleans, and that was a big thing in that movie? Maybe. And I'm maybe. thinking maybe, and I'm like, you know what? Perfect. <laughs> you know, like he's he's at his most K Nicholas Cage yeah. in both ways in this movie. Yep. And that's that's a rare treat. Oh yeah. Because they found the perfect way to get it in. Mm. Because they're like, well, we can't go from Nicolas Cage understating because he could do an understated performance. Mm -hmm. He does it in this movie. You know, understated at like you know, like a one or two level of intensity, but it's like boiling underneath and then suddenly erupts. Yeah. You know. So how do we justify that? And the answer was simple. Because if we're doing something about heavy metal album, hard rock album covers, yeah. drugs. Yes, there's a lot of drugs. There's a lot of drugs in this movie. There are drugs in this movie that aren't real drugs. That's, oh, yeah. So they have traits of other drugs yeah. combined. And Nicolas Cage is dropping shit while he's killing people. The people he's fighting are all high. Yeah. So you don't know how much is real, how much is just their fucking surreal, del surreal delusion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and on top of that, this movie is kind of... It, it, it has that simple crow-like premise, but it's also, like, because it's pulling from all these heavy metal album covers, it's almost like a fantasy story being yes. told in the modern day. Like, you have the evil wizard cult leader who kidnaps the woman and then kills her. And then you have Nicolas Cage, who is, like, he get he eventually gets on, like, a motorcycle, and he's, like, a knight, and he fight, yeah. sword fights someone yeah. with a chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, like we, like, like we were saying in the beginning, it's totally a heavy metal yeah. fucking... A story you would see in, like, heavy metal magazine. He fights these barbarian you know? biker gimps <laughs> that are straight from hell. That you're not sure if they're actually from hell or if they're just crazy. But it doesn't matter by the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it really doesn't. There is a lot of... There is... A, I hesitate to call it magical realism. Well, because it's it, it, it's weird because it's like psychedelic magical realism. Because, yeah. <laughs> so it adds another layer of like, what the fuck to it? Yeah, because like it, it, the movie is acknowledging the potential normal reality of the situation yeah. while also going to that epic metaphysical psychedelic level mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, like they may not where he literally meets... be demons from hell, but that's essentially what they are. Like a scene later in the movie where he meets, meets this one dude who has a tiger for no reason. Yeah, and like is that tiger really there? Is this scene actually happening? I don't know, but I love it. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. Like the funny thing is, is the minute that tiger showed up, the first thing I thought of was, "Holy dive!" Well, that's the other thing is they had this weird tiger imagery for the main character. I think at one point he was wearing a tiger shirt. He was. Yeah. So like, like he's the tiger. Is like the weird. Yeah, exactly, here. exactly. And I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything right now, even though we're talking about later in the movie because. I just told you the entire premise. You know it. Yeah. You know what happens. Yeah. You know what happens. There mm -hmm. are there are few things that we could spoil, but it's not yeah. that kind of movie. You can know every plot point, and that's not the same as watching Because the it. experience of the movie is something else. And if yeah, you've seen it's beyond, transcendent. And if you've seen Beyond the Black Rainbow, you know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> Beyond the Black Rainbow is simple. A girl is trapped in a thing, uh, trapped in isolation in this weird science lab, and there's this guy who's obsessed with her, and she escapes at the end. It's THX 1138, mm -hmm. it's fucking, you know, it's all those fucking movies. Mm -hmm. And this, but this one, this <laughs> one is. It's a type of story that we don't usually tell in movie form. I had a friend. We usually tell it in like 
cult comic books. I think I had a friend who described it as the crow with orcs. And I'm like, that's, yeah, that's not too far that's off. Not too far off. It's not too far off. You like know, a crow with chainsaws and orcs. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like there are no <laughs> literal orcs in the no, movie. No, but like, the but pet. that's the feel. Yeah, that's the feel of it. You know, like if you if you like the idea of Nicolas Cage being like a heavy metal, a hero in a heavy metal comic, you know, with a chainsaw having to fight like demons because they took his, took his girlfriend. This is the movie for you. Yeah. What can I tell you? Hell yeah. This movie's totally up my alley. I love every oh second Oh my God. Of it. Richard Brake is in this movie for like a oh, yeah. second. Richard Brake. If you, if you loved him in 31, he gets another pretty good cameo in this movie. Dude. It's brief, but it's great. It's very brief, but it's great. And, and one of the things I love about that scene is he's the guy, he's basically, he's like one of the wizards. He's like the alchemist. Yeah. You know, he's essentially an alchemist. Yeah, because he, he's the guy who ma- who's making the drugs that are being used throughout the entire movie. The drug maker. Yeah, he's the drug maker. But the thing that freaked me out the most is the fact when he's soaking the blotter paper into the acid, he's doing it with his bare hands. Yeah, so he's high. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> he does not give a shit. Like, it's one of those things where acid te- LSD does not technically absorb through the skin. Yeah. But there are a lot of little micro cuts yep. in your hands. So we're not joking so when we say everyone's high. Everyone's in high. Everyone's Everyone high. is high in this We know movie. the villain is dropping acid the entire time. We know that the biker monster orc things are high as fuck because he that's how Nicolas Cage gets his drugs. Yeah. <laughs> when he fights when them. When he fights them, it's just sort of like <laughs> fucking pile of cocaine and Nicolas Cage is like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's taking drugs. Um, all of the people within his the creepy cult guy's cult are taking drugs. I think the only one who doesn't really take drugs in this movie, I don't think, is his wife. But she smokes pot. Oh yeah, that's right. She smokes pot. Yeah, so she everyone's high. everyone's high in this movie. Yeah, everyone's yeah, high. constantly. Everyone is constantly perpetually high in this film. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it is a true trip of a movie. Oh um, man. So if you're looking for a psychedelic, murderous drug trip of a Crow remake, then I highly <laughs> recommend Mandy. Yeah. Um, well, you could also be like, look, this is Ghost Rider 4. Ghost Rider 4, yeah. <laughs> yeah you could also do that. You have Ghost Rider, you have Ghost Rider 2, you have Dry Man and, and now have we this. have Mandy. <laughs> yep. Um, so uh, I'm going to include an Amazon affiliate link to Mandy in the description below. And uh, with all that said, let us move on to the spoilers. Now, here's the problem. I do not know exactly what there is to spoil. I mean, outside... Yeah. Like... It's like <laughs> spoiling... It's like spoiling a concept album. Yeah. You know, like... like the I, experience of listening or watching it... Yeah. ...is the true experience, and nothing anyone says can ruin it for you, because like, it's I, made like that. I can tell you things, like the way they kill his wife is they hang her up and barbecue her to death inside a sleeping bag. Yeah. I, I can tell you that Nicolas Cage, that, 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 that in order to capture his wife, they summon these weird biker demons from hell, or they may not be from hell, but they're they're summoned with this fucking, like, yeah. like, like flute gonk thing. <laughs> that that, that they, they they just come out of the woods like they're the fucking uh, guys from Hobo and a Shotgun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like they're like the plague of the Nazgul yeah, or yeah. something. You know, like um, holy crap. But Nicholas Cage can kill them because yeah. he fights them all and fucking decimates them and beheads them. He's got. But Nicholas Cage builds himself mm. a magical axe. Yes. Forged. He forges in an axe. Fire. <laughs> He forges an axe in this movie, which they establish at the beginning of the movie that he's building the house they're living in. So he has, yeah. he has this like carpentry metalworking skills. Yeah, yeah. So they establish that. <laughs> so when he's just sort of like, I got to fucking defeat evil. Yes. So he forges a weapon. It's just badass yeah. axe. <laughs> it's an axe that I want on my wall. I oh want my that God, shit. Oh my God, yeah. If, 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 no, if, no, no. Prop... <laughs> Fucking prop makers. Yeah. Uh, fucking get on that. Make that axe. Weapons sell makers. that thing on the streets for 20 bucks. Yeah. You know? God. Um, I, I can tell you that the evil cult leader thinks of himself as a magical magician, but it's very clear he has no magic powers. Yeah. He has no real magic powers. He has... Well, he's like a, he's like a really bitchy... He's bitch boy Charles Manson. Yes. He's yes. bitch boy Charles Manson. Absolutely. And... That that they make that very clear because you're just sort of like how to how to put it. He's really intimidating until the point where he pussies out. Yes, and then he's by the end of it, utterly he's like, a pussy. By the end of it, he's like crying for like forgiveness. Like, let me go. I didn't do anything. I'll suck your dick. Yeah, that seems so great. 
That's another thing about this movie. It's full of dark humor. Oh and my I god! No, oh my god! The actor who fucking played the cult leader. I'm like, he, he went from great. he went from intimidating to terrified to I'll suck your dick fucking perfectly. Well, yes. Just, and the only reason why he's watching even, that, you're like, damn, dude. And the only reason why he even kills the wife is that he's obsessed with the wife and he thinks the wife is like the one. But then when she makes fun of his dick. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> she makes fun of his tiny dick, and then he's like, "Oh, now you're gonna die." Like, yeah, yeah, she makes fun of his tiny dick and his music and his music. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because yep. he's because like he's bitch, a boy fucking, Charles he's bitch boy Charles Manson. So he he fucking has music, and the thing that I thought was really funny is that his music, uh, very intentionally, I thought was intended to mimic Jethro Tull. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. supposed to sound like Jethro Tull, but he's supposed to be like this evil fucking cult leader, and you're like. Jethro Tull music? He's so really? Funny. You know, he's like so, he's, he's, he's so fucking pathetic. But he has this—he has this cult that's around him that will do anything he says. Um, women that will fuck him and men that will die for him. Yeah. Um, and Nicolas Cage fucking kills them all yeah. <laughs> one by one. No mercy. <laughs> oh my god, no, no. Um, he has this—he has the al- the alchemist lady that that makes all his concoctions. Um, oh yeah. Cause she's yeah. the one that drugs drugs the uh, the the girlfriend. Yeah. So that when she sees him, she's supposed to have a religious experience, but instead she's just laughing at him because she's so high. She's so high. Yeah, she's so high. She just don't give a shit. <laughs> yep. Like, well, that's one of those. That's one of those things where it's like I don't know. I don't know how to say it. That the, the, the thing is, having been on a lot of psychedelic experiences. Laughing at a deity that is trying to impress you—that is a thing that can happen. Yep. That is an experience you could have where you're just like, "This is dumb as shit." He wanted to be that. worshipped, but he was laughed at. He's so. laughed at, you know. And so if, and if makes, the god can't fucking be like, "Ah, good enough," you know, like, and he, ma- he makes the bitch move. In. He makes the bitch move. He does not make sure Nicolas Cage is dead. See, that's the problem yeah. with all these movies. You gotta make sure he's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> just gotta kill him. So, yeah, you know, just gotta kill him. And they're like, "Well, why don't these guys kill them?" It's like, "Ah, oh, they're stupid." The thing is, is that to be fair, like the the wound they gave him should have killed it him. It should have killed him. Yeah, yeah, he was like basically like gutted in like the side, like Jesus. Like, yeah, like but but it turns out he's so Nicholas Cage. <laughs> yeah, they could just power through it and free himself. It's like it's like revenge, you know, yes. like which she should totally. Oh be yeah, dead, no, no, but no. She she powers through dead. it. Dead. Yeah, <laughs> but she powers through it. it... The will, the will to live is strong, you know. Like, I, no, I, no, no, you needed to headshot him. You need to make sure that bam, he was gone. Oh, like, dude, no, he cut. No, Nicholas, you can't take Nicholas Cage out from a headshot. Huh? No, doesn't work. No, he just fucking comes at you because that's the, the only thing you've gotten if you shoot Nicholas Cage in the head is the part of his brain that is holding his powers back. You know, like th- now you just got like pure Cage coming from the oh, fucking man. heavens, man. You know, you don't want that. That's hard to deal with, you know. You don't want to be on the business end of that shit. And and yeah, if you're if you're wondering, the movie's called Mandy because the girlfriend's Mandy. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it. I love the fact that it's it it um like another movie we're gonna do a vlog on has like chapter headers. And yes. All the chapter headers are based off the logos from specific bands. Yes. Like, there's one that's very obviously King Crimson. I thought it was like, yes. There was like a black metal one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, when they went to Cradle of Filth, I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do this. Yeah. Well, I love it. It's like a heavy metal movie, but without a lot of heavy metal music. It was interesting. It was... Yeah, well, yeah. It wasn't... What was... It was... You, you could tell that the guy who was... The people who were doing the score... We're evoking we're making, it. We're evoking it. Yeah. They were making those sounds, but like it did feel like we're trying to evoke this, but unfortunately we can't get all the rights to all the music yeah. that we want. You know, um, Which, plus this guy's like pro- a, a kind of guy who's sort of like, no, I want it to feel like this. Not but I don't want to actually just yeah. ape on someone else's fucking thing. So it's like a metal exploitation film, but without yeah. actual like classic songs that you're familiar with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's... It, it, Although, really yeah, fun. this is normally the kind of movie that, like, how to put it, I was glad they got someone like Richard Brake because Ooh, he's yeah. the perfect guy to play that brief role, that brief supporting role um, that would normally, that in a metal exploitation um, movie, would, normally would have done by, like, Ozzy or Dio. Yeah. You know? But it's he like... He was great. Oh, no, he's... Oh, he was Richard cool. Brake's fantastic. You know, he's... And the funny thing is, is that he's... Here he's playing, like the wise and wary wizard, mm-hmm. you know? So it's not like, he's not playing Doomhead. It's completely Well, he's the guy at the top of the mountain who tells him where the bad guy is. You yeah. Know? It's like... Yeah, yeah, he's the oracle, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like... 
<laughs> you know, he just happens that's to also so be good. the drug maker. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's well, he's got to he's got to inhale the 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 fumes of 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 the volcano. Well, that that movie to me, like <laughs> the funny thing is, there's a lot of more interesting visual things that happen over the course of the movie. But that to me was when the movie meets met when the movie became peak psychedelic. Oh yes. Because the entire exchange was so surreal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like when he meets Richard Brake, rather than everything being explicitly psychedelic, like it has in other parts of the movie, mm -hmm. this sounds more like you're watching from the physical plane a conversation that is mainly happening on in astral space yes <laughs> you know and you're just because you understand the meaning of everything that they're yep. saying but if you were to transcribe the words you'd be like what wait what, what? you know <laughs> wait and also I there's a it. Yeah. and also there's a tiger and there's a tiger there for some reason <laughs> The the metaphorical literal tiger, I guess. yeah, which Richard Brake has, which the guy, which Nicholas Cage, without words, mm -hmm. tells him to set free, and he's like, okay. <laughs> and he's, he lets the tiger free because that's Nicholas Cage. That's the other thing. They have free. this exchange, which is like half of an exchange because like half of it's not actually verbalized, and you're just like, what? Yeah. What's oh going no! On? I fucking love that moment because <laughs> I'm watching that and I'm like. Okay, this confirms it. This guy's done all... The director of this movie has done a lot of drugs. <laughs> that much was clear in the first five seconds. <laughs> I love this movie. Oh, man. I love Mandy. I oh, great. I highly recommend Mandy. Yeah. And I like we, that they mainly did it with optical effects, too. Yeah. Like, in-camera optical effects. Oh, there's a lot. Uh, the, the, yeah. He did that, too, with... um uh, with Beyond um, the Black Rainbow, like, yeah. He wanted to use a lot of, like, classic filmmaking techniques to recreate... To create classic-style, like, psychedelic imagery. Yeah. And he's really good at that. And back then, you didn't have a computer to do it, so you had to do it optically. Yeah, yeah, so he decides to do it that way as well. Well, he marriages it very well, because there's obviously moments where he's using, like, some digital enhancements to certain visuals. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. So he's, like, he's like a good example of that, those techniques being brought to the modern age. Yeah, yeah, because he's very results-driven, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. I highly recommend Mandy. Um, uh, where can they find you, Count Jackula? You can find me here at YouTube. Count Jackula Show. Ba bam Hell yeah. You can follow me on Twitch. Uh, we stream on Twitch right now because YouTube is uh, has decided to give me a 90-day ban, and I think I'm on day 30 of that. So until... Got about two more months. Yeah, I got about two more months before I can be back By on YouTube. By next year, he'll be back yeah. on... By 2019, I should be back on YouTube <laughs> streaming. Uh, but until then, you can find my Twitch channel right there. I'm also count underscore Jackula. You're going to see the neon goat. You know that's us. Yep. You can, get, you can join us there every... Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 9 p.m. on Sunday Pacific Standard Time uh, for Satanic Sunday. And you might also want to just follow me there because I also randomly stream during the week whenever I've got a couple of yeah. spare hours. You know, yeah, I'm like um, that with my Twitch too. It's just like when I can find the time. Yeah, you can also follow me on Twitter, on Instagram. I am Satanic Dracula. And I'm, sometimes I'm on Facebook. Just... just Look for it. Look for it. Look for it. I forget. I, I forget what my fucking thing is on Facebook. I'm pretty sure it's the Count Jackula show. The Count Jackula show. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty look sure. for the Count Jackula show on Facebook. <laughs> Usually, know. it's a good go, go to either Count Jackula show or Planet Dracula. It's one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably one of them too. <laughs> that's 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 how reliable <laughs> I am on Facebook. But hey, take a gamble. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and uh, Twitter and uh, Twitch at the Horror Guru. Um, I stream whenever I have the opportunity, which is sometimes I don't, so I don't. Yeah. But when I do, I do. And uh, obviously, you're following my channel here right now, so be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And with all that said, peace out, my fellow Gorehounds, and go out there and watch Mandy because you owe it to yourself.